successful in your own right. And so I want to open up the question a little bit as to you climbing the corporate world or some of you are also business owners. And what I would like to ask each of you is what are some challenges that confronted you, that tempted you to stop, but in spite of that, you continued climbing. So what would you tell that young girl who is perhaps now entering the workspace or is there and struggling with upward mobility and is feeling dis, uh, disenfranchised or she's feeling doubtful? What do you tell her to encourage her to continue? So Ms. Joy, since you have the mic, why don't you start with that? easy believing in yourself, especially when you're accustomed to hearing you can't. And be the little red engine and know that you could. Climbing the ladder of success, climbing the ladder of being who you are, we all have a journey. Nobody's journey is the same. We can lend advice to each other, we can support each other, but we really don't know what each other goes through. So I would say to any young woman within the sound of my voice, align yourself with like-minded people, individuals, people that are going somewhere. When you want to fly, you don't go with the chickens. You look for eagles so you can soar. So if you are within the company of others that is constantly bashing your ideas, bashing your feelings, being a boyfriend, a brother, a sister, whoever, Learn to separate yourself from that. You know, this is amazing that um, after 26 years of being a wedding event planner, not only am I domestically, which is in South Florida, my home, but it's now internationally that I have become a destination wedding specialist. And I have my sister to thank for that, my biggest cheerleader, my supporter, in a very negative but positive way. Because I am a nurse by profession, an RN, and when I said to her, I'm going to leave what I'm doing, the medical field, to become a wedding planner, as it was called back then. It was not a very popular job, as it is right now. Everybody's gravitating towards that. The first thing she said to me were words of wisdom. And I laugh at it until now. She says, you're too black. They won't hire you. You should stay into nursing. Well, I took those words very hard, but carefully I dissected it. And I said to myself, I'm going to show you how black I am. And can I tell you right now that there is no individual in North America that I cannot pick up my phone that's not in my Rolodex in the wedding and event industry because I not only a member of several organizations, but I also sit on the board of ABC, which is American Bridal Consultants, as one of their major consultants. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. Agreed? Could we look forward to that? It's not easy. One treader at a time. Thanks. Um, so the question is, uh, I'm 23 and I started a business. Actually, I finished uh, university at around 19 and I started to consult for some international research companies based in London and America. Uh, my parents thought I was crazy. They said, why are you doing sociology? Stupid people do that. I was like, excuse me, uh, do law, become a doctor. But I didn't. Because the question that I had to ask myself was heart over logic. Logic is going to tell you this would never work. It's impossible to start up a market research company in Ghana. You won't make money, and you're going to be stranded. Logix will tell you, oh, you should you know, pursue your PhD. You know, go to the diaspora. See what's out there. Then come back and give back to your country. Logix is going to tell you, you know, it's better to settle down, marry, you know, start a family. But there's heart. There's heart that's going to tell you to follow your dreams and to follow your passion. But I had to finally come to the, to the realization that we have to take a mixed approach. 
the merger of heart and logic, and that is intuition. And without it, you can't really move forward. You follow your intuition, and you'll be okay. And you don't care what anybody says. Follow that small, small spirit, or I should say small voice that says, keep on pushing, move forward, it's going to be okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So prior to being in the academic world, I also worked in the corporate sector, uh, both in the U.S. as well as in South Africa. And throughout my entire experience, I can say that there's never been a space where I walked into the room and felt fully like I belonged. Right? Often it's black women especially, we're one of one in these rooms, and academic spaces especially. My faculty board is all older white men. My peers are largely white men. Um, and so understand, first of all, for the young people in the room, that you're always going to feel outside of yourself in these spaces, and you'll always feel as if you're not, it's called imposter syndrome. You're gonna, you're, there's this feeling that they're going to find out that I don't belong in some way. And the funny thing is, is that everybody feels it in the room, but you think that you're the only one experiencing it. And so when you hit these hurdles, when you say, okay, I need to exit left, this is not the space for me, there is so much to be said for stubbornness. Um, another word for it is grit. It's just stay in the room, continue to show up, even after your worst day, after your worst presentation, after the most awkward meeting, show up the next day. They'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they won't be able to get rid of you. Head down, stay the course. Yes. Thank you. My advice, and I've given this to my daughter, is some of us are blessed as we're growing up to be supported and nurtured and given the feedback positively. But there's a point as we advance, as we get better, we don't get the feedback. And what I've told her, that is exactly when you're doing well. When they're not giving you the feedback, know that, that, that you're delivering. The most important thing is, we all know intuitively, that Angie mentioned, about what is right, what is correct, what our standards are, what we're driving to. And so stick with that. And ultimately, it's you're doing it for yourself. As we, as we advance, as we mature, we're doing it for ourselves. And for me, that is what brings us self satisfaction. Thank you. For me to share with others, I myself I evaluate my own challenges and my own experiences. For me, the hardest challenge is a challenge inside your family unit, your home. That has been my greatest challenge in the past. And because it was, I determined that I will never let anyone control my circumstances. It doesn't mean that things don't happen, but what it means now is that I am a woman of faith. This is not about religion necessarily, but it is about my own relationship with my creator as I see God, the father, mother God, because if God created us, he, 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 she must, as they say in the Genesis Bible, Bible rather in Genesis, he created us in his image. So I have to be in his image. So for me, I have worked very much on my vertical relationship with faith. So that is what I share with people when they're going through challenging times. Another thing is, that would be a pet peeve for me is propaganda, fake news, vicious rumors. And I have been both blessed and challenged to be a person who's been in public life for most of my professional career. And so again, I counsel, especially women, just don't listen to the noise. So what I tell them, because this is what I believe, just as my sister there shared, believe in yourself. I believe in me. I love me most. And if I didn't, well, then I'd be good for nothing. So this is what I share, and I share it because I, like any woman here, I would have experienced life's challenges. Another lesson I share is a lesson of survivorhood. Through it all, past it all. And I've heard about the story of homelessness 
and I'm sure that some of us may have felt homeless at some stage of our lives. We, all of us, as long as we've lived long enough, would have experienced challenges. The main thing is to be resilient. And that is the last, perhaps, um, virtue that I would throw out to someone who's experiencing. Just live past it. Believe in yourself. Have faith. And have resilience. And all will be well again. I don't know what more to say. <laughs> I have been fortunate to be mentored by Bishop's High School old students. And I feel blessed that I have been allowed to be a mentor to Bishop's High School students. Yesterday we had an engaging session with some of the students and I imparted to them what I have tried to impart to my mentees, that they must remain positive, that they must respect themselves, and that they must command respect. Not everyone will like you. This is not a, with all due respect to our um, Miss World, it's not a fashion contest, though that's not necessarily just a fashion contest, I know. And it's so that one has to remain motivated, and I've had to um, not so much counsel, but be there for my mentees when they would have called me, just as my mentors were there for me. And I think that is very, very important for us. I know all of us sitting here and many, many persons out there would be mentors. And it is to provide that guidance, that listening ear, that kind word, that little push, because I know I was pushed not only by my parents, but by my mentors. And I think it is important that we take up that challenge and pass that baton. Well, um, I think you, all the other panelists covered um, pretty much everything, but one thing I would like to reinforce is Ananda's point of faith and, and, and being connected with God and, and, and knowing who you are in him and who you were created to be. And um, I think once that assurance is firmly embedded in your spirit, uh, it will be exemplified in the, in the way that you approach uh, challenges that you face in, in, in your um, work life and, and even your personal life. Um, I would also like to reinforce resilience because that is also a component of faith that you stand firm and even though the waters get rough uh, you continue to persevere but uh, one thing I would like to throw in there, one nugget I would like to throw in there is, is excellence. Um, as you, um, even though you might be going through, the quality of your work should not diminish. Um, you should make sure that your, your deliverables are um, of an excellent um, caliber uh, because, um, you know, you want that level of respect to be maintained. And the third thing I would like to say is that we live in a huge world. And I know while some of us might be endeared to um, where we are placed physically, um, there is a huge world where our, we can use our skills and where um, our, our skills can be um, accepted and appreciated. So I would say um, diversify and, and, um, uh, and use the opportunities that the entire, you know, global, global opportunities that might be there. Um, you can, you, that's another um, yeah, nugget that I will just throw in the mix. Thank you.